all for joining us today as we gather to celebrate the incredible yet tragically short life of Amanda Rapp. Some people don't get the chance to get older. Some people have their lives taken from them without their consent, you know? Why should we need to hide that? Y'all, she is literally screaming for help and telling us. Oh my God! Who was asking on me? I don't want no girl close to my age doing my thoughts and video gaming me, so. We're gonna use Amanda as a case study. We did some virtual reality exposure therapy, so we put her in some triggering environment. Oh! We're gonna be documenting exactly how we're getting Amanda into treatment. When she first went on there, she looked completely different than when she, the next time she got on there, she looked worse and she get worse, worse, worse. The way that you get somebody that doesn't want to get help into treatment is through something called an LPS conservatorship. And that's what we're using for Amanda. When I was smoking, I'm like, in the cut, and then I'm gonna get murdered. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm behind the scenes, I'm annoying everybody, and then I get murdered. She had passed away. They did the autopsy. They looked at her medical records. In the last episode, we were discussing the sudden, unexpected passing of Amanda Rabb. Now, as you would have seen on part one of Virtual Reality Hell, Amanda was taken off the streets as a subject and eventually treated as a case study for an experimental virtual reality treatment program that used virtual reality that was not FDA approved for any medical purpose. Hi, I'm Lumi Abramovich and I'm the founder of Autonomous User Rehabilitation Agent, or Aura for short. To help or cure addiction? I don't really know. So we're right in the middle of that investigation and what we're about to look into is how Amanda actually passed away. Amanda Rabb, at 25 years old, passed away in a treatment center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It was called Desert Hope Treatment Center. Only a few short days after her passing, Lima Yavremovich, along with Amanda Rabb's purported father, showed up on Mark Leta's channel, Soft White Underbelly, in order to inform everyone in the audience that Amanda had passed. The treatment center staff walked into Amanda's room thinking that she was just peacefully sleeping and realized that she had passed away. Um, it's been a really, really big shock for us. Now, during that May 15th video, Lima said that there was no foul play involved in Amanda's death. Remember, this is like a week after Amanda died. Any um, foul play, any self-harm, anything um, in that nature was already ruled out. And Lima says, I know they did a toxicology report. They, well, I know that they did an, um, a toxicology report. Only thing she had in her system was Tylenol. All she had in her system was Tylenol. A few months would go by and Albert Monero Jr., who we've met from the last video and who you're gonna meet in this video as well. In my courtroom, you are under oath, which means you do not lie and you tell the truth. He would go to another podcast on YouTube a couple months later and he would say, They just found her and she, they, they did a toxicology toxicology test and she didn't have anything but like Tylenol in her system. So yeah, like no. It, you he know, would allow the, the host of the podcast to perpetuate the story that Amanda only had Tylenol in her system. She didn't have anything but like Tylenol in her system. Very interestingly, that portion of the podcast no longer exists on Joel Marshall's channel as of the date of the recording of this video. But don't worry, I have the clip. And then unfortunately, you know, she passed away at yeah. the facility. What we're going to do right now is we're going to watch the video that Lima posted herself on her YouTube channel of Amanda's funeral. Let's get into it. So the first thing we have is a couple paragraphs. Amanda's short-lived life was a loss felt by millions who watched her struggle and incredible recovery because of those who sent prayers, cards, gifts, and donations to help her heal. She transformed her life. Well, and I guess now her death. Felt compelled, this is Lima speaking, to make this video to hold on to the positive memories she left behind in an effort to protect the family's privacy. I did not share their personal goodbyes. Okay. So let's see what's going on in this video. Thank you all for joining us today as we gather to celebrate the incredible yet tragically short life of Amanda Rapp. These past two weeks have been 
extremely difficult for all of us. The first thing I'm thinking is, what is with this casket? Because I know she was cremated and dumped onto the shoreline of Venice Beach. But most of all for Larry, who has been the light in Amanda's life through the happiest of her times and her darkest moments. We turned out to be a molester. The scholarship I originally started to help Amanda, I've since renamed after Amanda. Her legacy will continue to be one of bright and happy sunshine days through Amanda's Light Scholarship Program. This woman has no shame. She is now using Amanda's funeral as an opportunity to advertise the scholarship, pro Amanda's Light Scholarship Program. She will continue to live on through my work and the lives she continues to touch and inspire through her story. I don't wanna give you any of my money. So you can do to my family member what happened to Amanda? Take comfort in knowing that Amanda not only overcame her own darkness, but that she will continue to be a light for those who are lost and seemingly hopeless. Honestly, y'all, I cannot watch one more second of this shit. It is so preposterous and outlandish. I'm gonna get to the next part of the video where they're now dumping Amanda's ashes seemingly in violation of federal and state statute. When you dump in somebody's human remains on the shoreline of a beach there's kids out there playing there's people out there having a nice old fancy uh, afternoon at the beach comment below have you ever um poured a relative or a loved one's ashes at sea if so what all did you have to go through what all parameters loopholes and all that you comment below and here's you know what let's watch it together well amanda bear here we are back at venice beach we went so often just to get a burger and fries, just to walk around. And no, I'm not getting in the water again today. <laughs> Okay. Larry said, no, I'm not getting in the water again today. But this was one of our favorite spots because she loved it here and I loved it here. And every time we would come, it would be a toss up. What are we going to eat today? So I always let her make the choice. She thought she was going to make the choice. What is he talking about? Coming here today is like a closure for me. Coming full circle with my Amanda Bear. I turned out to be a molester. Okay. Now we're really getting into why we're here. Are you asking the question or no? Yes, if you could say anything to Amanda right now and she could hear you, what would you say? Y'all see this man? Amanda, you coming into my life had such a humongous effect that I could never have known when I first met you. Y'all might remember him from the uh, virtual reality hell part one. The first to really stand out in the crowd was Albert Monero. One, two, three, drink that. So I can sing, I can dance, I can act, and personality, yeah, you know? It's like, there's four. Have you ever heard of a quadruple threat before? Uh, he had appeared in a video with the Takali twins. Chloe alongside her assistant perform routine checkups, as well as more complicated procedures. Two, in the next part of this, uh, series, you're gonna find out we don't really know where they are. A desperate search is underway for a woman who went missing in West Hollywood. Dahlia Takali was last seen yesterday around 5 p.m. on North Genesee Avenue near Santa Monica Boulevard. And all kind of court documents and all kind of cr crazy stuff's going on with that, but we don't even have time in this episode to get into it. But this man right here... It's weird that I feel like I know you so well because I've only known you for about six months. Somehow is connected to Lima's twin sisters. Nice to meet you, Mr. Waterbridge. He said that that used to be his best friend. You are HIV positive. Now Lima's his best friend. No, I just I just want to cap off about Aura yeah. and Tell say, me. you know, the CEO and my best friend, Lima Yaramovich, this is yeah. her baby. She's this intense. is her child. Yeah, I've seen and her. And you're going to hear that name. You know, you're going to hear that name in the future, I promise you, because I've never met anybody so intelligent and so caring. In this video, he says Larry Rabs his best friend. I feel like Larry's the best friend I've had forever. The man got all kind of best friends. His name going to flash across the screen as Albert Monero. Or a program director. Well, I invite you to go look him up. Because our program director ain't the first thing that comes up. The man got 
a prolific acting career. He'd been on Nickelodeon, on a Dan Schneider show. It's like, what is going on with this man? Okay, the question was, if you could say anything to Amanda right now, what would it be? I feel like every time I hang out with your father, I get to see you, love your dad. If I'm being totally honest, I feel like you brought Larry into my life. I feel like Larry's the best friend I've had forever. <laughs> so you did that for me, Amanda, and I need it, and he needed it. I love your dad, and to be totally honest, I feel like you brought him into my life? That's your eulogy? I can't get away from I love you. I know your dad loves you more than anything. I turned out to be a molester. The shit is fucked. In that video I mentioned earlier where, you know, Lima says there was only Tylenol in Amanda's system, she mentions that they still, you know, are waiting for more information or something like that. Months go by and now it's December 2021. This is just last year. I mean, not even a year ago. Lima comes back on Mark Leita's channel. All right, Lima. Hi. Welcome back again. Thank you. In a video entitled, Amanda's Autopsy Results hyphen Lima is seven months after Amanda has passed away. They did the autopsy. They looked at her medical records. So what we're gonna do today on this video is do a little bit of old school comparison and contrast to what is being said. And so I'm just gonna read it word for word of what we got. And what was written down. So we have the autopsy results for Amanda. Lima says, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Now, it, very importantly, Lima is sitting on that same chair everybody always sits in, holding about two pieces of paper in her hands. All right, Lima. All right. Welcome back again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We haven't seen you in a while. Yep. So we finally, after how many months now? It's been like... It's been since nine April. Nine months or something? April, May. So we have the autopsy results for Amanda. Yes, we do. Which just came a couple days ago. Uh, tell me what uh, what you know. And so I'm just going to read it word for word of what we got. Um, the cause of death was marked as a seizure disorder. This autopsy report that I have right here that I've triple checked is the only one says it was ready in September. That video is in December. So I think she probably had gotten it way more than a couple days ago, but I really don't know. She's holding about two pieces of paper in her hand. And then she proceeds to say, the reason it took so long was because it was some type of lack of evidence. Yeah, so the reason that it took so long is because there was a lot of uh, lack of documentation because Amanda was homeless. And so basically uh, what they used was they did the autopsy. They looked at her medical records. Me and Larry, that's Amanda's dad, who you just saw dumping her ashes onto the beach. I live with my dad. He turned out to be a molester. Me and Amanda's dad actually even sent in evidence. They sent in evidence. Have y'all ever heard of that? And then uh, Larry and I also sent in your videos to kind of show her condition from the drug use and uh, the beatings that she took. And we also had some some photographs. Um, now, if y'all don't know this already, if you follow my other channels, you do. Trigger, trigger alert warning. I lost my father from a drug addiction. My dad died in 2017 overdosing on drugs. We didn't find that out immediately. The first thing they told us was he had a heart attack. About three months went by, they got a toxicology report, and then they told us the heart attack was caused by drugs. It sent him into a cardiac arrest or something like that. So there was not three toxicology reports for that to be done. There was one. And I promise y'all, did not one person send in evidence to the coroner to get a result, okay? 
Nobody sent nothing in. We were crying, grieving, going to about, trying to go about our lives, trying to co recover. We got that news. Of course, that was really difficult for us to deal with. But at no time were we in a communication with the coroner, with the autopsy people, at no time. And we did not get three toxicology reports done like we're done here. So I don't really know what was going on during that time, but I believe that the public has a right to know what was going on. I think we should know who was sending emails back and forth. What was really going on that resulted in this taking so long? Because Lima told us on Soft White Underbelly, it was a lack of evidence. But they couldn't mark it as post-traumatic epilepsy because of a lack of evidence. So, so she and Larry sent in videos from Mark Leita's channel. Larry and I also sent in your videos to kind of show her condition from the drug use. Why would someone do that? If the traumatic brain injury and the assaults were well documented, they would have most likely marked it as a homicide. So, um... That was a major wake-up call for all of us. So, y'all remember that whole thing about the only has Tylenol in her system? Not only Lima said it. All she had in her system was Tylenol. Based on the time of this video, we're talking about seven months before the autopsy results video. Lima said only Tylenol in Amanda's system. And so I think uh, they, well, I know that they did an, um, a toxicology report Joel Marshall said the same thing to his followers and Albert Monero did not correct him. And then unfortunately, you know, she passed away at yeah. the facility. Yeah. Um, she'd they, had so many physical issues prior that, you know, it kind of caught up to her. They just found but, her and she they, had, they did a toxicology, toxicology test and she didn't have anything but like Tylenol in her system. So yeah, it like no, a, it, you know, the way I look at it and her father. He turned out to be a molester. Who I'm very close with now looks at it yeah. is that she she was ready to go to God and she had yeah. done what she needed to do here. We're going to use Amanda as a case study. What the fuck? Are people using this out in the field yet? We are doing case studies only right now. Now this is public information. You can call in and request this yourself. Anyone can get that. I'm not special. Anyone can get this because the public is supposed to have access to this information. Amanda was last seen alive at the treatment center on May 8th, 2021 at about 11.55 p.m. and administered her nightly medications, which were hydrolazine. That don't sound like Tylenol. All she had in her system was Tylenol. Lozartan, gabapentin, clonidine. That don't sound like Tylenol. And risperidone, which also don't sound like Tylenol. All she had in her system was Tylenol. So one, two, three, four, five additional medications in Amanda's system other than Tylenol. She never corrected herself. We're sitting here on August, whatever it is, 2022, never corrected herself. Just wait, there's way more. Now I do want to point out, one of the things Lima, Albert, they all perpetuate, is that the reason Amanda died was because all this time she spent on the streets. The time that Amanda spent on the street is the reason that she passed away, but um, Amanda was just homeless too long. Sorry. But, um, so people shouldn't be allowed to be homeless and that, you know, in Amanda's case, the fact that she was using, that she was allowed to use drugs for so long and that she was abused and that none of that, a lot of it wasn't reported or, or documented, I'm just gonna read word for word from what we got. And so I'm just gonna read it word for word of what we got. Remember y'all, the name of this video is Amanda's autopsy results. And she says, and I'm quoting, the cause of death was marked as a seizure disorder. Um, the cause of death was marked as a seizure disorder. That's not true. The cause of death was marked as a cardiac arrhythmia. Now there's some contributing factors. Hypertension, I think that's like high blood pressure. Obesity, she wasn't obese before she was on gabapentin and the rest, that's all I'm gonna say. And schizophrenia. Hypertension, obesity, and schizophrenia were contributing factors to her death. It does not say getting beat on the street. It does not say being homeless. It does not say not taking a bath. So bacteria buildup can also cause a health risk to that person. It does not say getting R-A-P-E-D. It does not say that, it says, cardiac arrhythmia. Now, of course, when I see Lima say, the cause of death was marked as a seizure disorder, I'm just wondering why that's not what the autopsy results say. And in fact, 
I flipped through every page, y'all know I did. Now some of it's redacted, but not one single place in this whole report does it say epilepsy, does it say seizure disorder? It doesn't even say she had one seizure. Why, why is Lima in a video called autopsy results, holding papers in her hand, confirming she has the autopsy results, seven months after Amanda died, three months after this was available, saying that Amanda's cause of death was a seizure disorder. That's not true. Why was Lima saying that? Why? When I started calling those statements lies, did she sue me instead of just correcting the record? Hey guys, oops, sorry. I was reading from some notes. I was re I was misunderstood. Oops, let me correct the record publicly. No, no, no. She sued me and, and before suing me, demanded that I retract the statement that that was a lie. Well, you tell me. Lima Yavremovich, the guardian, the person who took legal responsibility for Amanda's treatment and care, the person who collected thousands of dollars and GoFundMe donations from Mark Leitz's viewers, promising them in exchange for updates on Amanda's story. Isn't it irresponsible of her not to have read word for word? Isn't it irresponsible of her to not have corrected that Tylenol mistruth? Um, the cause of death was marked as what's really going on? A seizure disorder. They got me living in the upside down. I can't even call it a lie. So in the time since I made these discoveries and started making videos about them, Lima has come out on Instagram and made a post with like, literally a nasty patty <laughs> from the Krusty Krab or wherever they were making them at the plankton, the chum bucket, whatever. And referring to my investigation into these incidents as online drama. And I think that it is very interesting to refer to a legitimate investigation being done on a public level and showing people how to use publicly available documents to find inconsistencies in the statements of people who are trying to get thousands of dollars from the public as drama. It's not drama. It is a very, very serious matter, not only with the Amanda Rabb story, but with what went on with Bam and continues to go on with him. He wasn't allowed to use his phone. He said he wasn't allowed to call people he wanted to call. A podcast just aired yesterday with Steve-O and Bam, and Bam confirmed a lot of this stuff. Because Novak said, dude, if you just do a year, you'll understand how much better you will feel. Because you always go 30 to 60 days, maybe 90 tops. But if you just do a year, you'll understand. And I call him up after you. I'm like, Novak, I understand. I get it. I feel great now. I just don't want to return to that anymore. The way we kind of deal with rehab is, is just not enough. It's not absolutely, long enough. Absolutely, absolutely. The problem with these rehabs, they're kicking people out only 30 days. Okay. And, and I think that that is, is, is very good. Um, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. It's really weird how sort of like preachy um, Steve-O is in this interview, like condescending and sort of been there, done that. He knows better than you. And it's like, he said he wasn't, he doesn't even know what's going on on social media. Steve-O said, Am, Bam, can you at least say the things that have been said online aren't true? <laughs> We're up on next, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, Bride of Chucky, like what are you talking about? <laughs> Let's uh, put your I've seen a lot of activity on social media with the hashtag free Bam. And people seem to think that you're the Britney Spears of Jackass, the evil villains have taken over your life and stolen all your money. And like, can we save they say that none of that is true. Bam said, well, I can't, not really. <laughs> I can't tell you what was going on on social media because I wasn't allowed to have my phone. I, I don't know what's been going on because I haven't been able to look. I, as a matter of fact, I can't even post on my Instagram. Everything has to go through Johnny Schiller from Heart Supply because I had to sign a contract because when I was dealing with the lawsuit with Paramount and Jackass, I was posting shit like, fuck these motherfuckers, blah, blah, and it was potentially ruining my lawsuit. So I had to sign a paper saying that only Johnny can clear what goes through my Instagram. So I don't even know my new passcode. I can't control what goes on it. Can um, I tell you, I think that's good news. I do know there was somebody sharing videos of me, you know, in the back of a police car, whatever. Yeah, I was. But another thing that Bam did say in that video, he was suspicious of her in that video. Well, who's, not who's keeping Bam from being able to go on social media? 
There were a couple big accounts that had, in the early days of Aura, endorsed her, promoted her, collaborated with her. This video is in collaboration with 16 Leo. I don't know any of the details behind what went on in those conversations. Lima's first video on her YouTube channel ever was with a creator, a content creator called Dissocia Did. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video by Dissocia Did. Hi everyone, welcome to my first video with Chloe from Dissocia Did. That Dissocia Did, the channel, has come out and said on a community post that they do not endorse this type of behavior. They did not know that that's what they were endorsing whenever, you know, they did the collab. I do not endorse or condone anyone attacking. I say it at the beginning as a disclaimer in every video and I really mean it. We have the truth on our side. I'm begging you not to send any hateful emails. Don't even send any emails. Don't send any text messages to Lima or anyone related to her. That's not what we do. That's not what I do. And I am begging you not to do that. Leave the girl alone. There's some truth we yet we don't yet have and we're gonna get to it. Yeah, so I started Aura because my sisters who are identical twins have had some mental health struggles. A desperate search is underway for a woman who went missing in West Hollywood. 